Okay, um, David, uh, how did uh, Brian Eno and the Talking Heads make a connection? Well, he came and saw us when we uh, were in London the first time, the first time we were over there. We were, it was before we had a record out, really. And we got the offer to go over there and open for the Ramones. And so we thought, well, that's kind of chancy. Yeah. That, that their audience may not like us, but we decided to do it anyway. And we got uh, dates where we played two nights at a little club in London, and he came and saw us there. And uh, he liked us. And so we sort of got to be friends and hung out together and stuff. And then he came to New York on a vacation. And, you know, we hung out a little bit together there. And when, when we went back to London the next time to play, we got together then again. And shortly after that, it was time for us to think about making another record. Uh-huh. And so we were, you know, thinking of all the different producers that we felt we might like to work with. And it just became sort of a natural choice then because we already got along with him. We already had a lot of interests in common and things like that. So we thought, why, sh why not work with Brian? Since we already know we get along, rather than someone who, uh, who knows what their weird personality quirks might be. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you have any? Uh, let's see. What uh, what made you decide to put your art into uh, music and uh, lyrics instead of on canvas and mixed media? Um, no. As far as, as far as like your art and like, it seems you went in like the music direction you were in, uh, in that school. And um, instead of, you know, more or less going into the direction of a, a way a regular artist would go, you know, with trying to make it, you know, with, with his paintings or his sculptures, you decided to do it in music. Uh, what made you decide to do this? It seemed more real and more sort of, I don't know, Lots of things seem more real, more vital, more exciting. Um, seem to get across to a, a larger number of people. The direction I was going in, in art was sort of in that direction anyway. Mm -hmm. I was working with uh, questionnaires and p polls and things like that that had to do with reactions between myself and larger numbers of people than, yeah. than a, a gallery. I didn't want to work through galleries and things. And then, uh, I mean, I'd always liked playing. So I thought, well, I have a, it wasn't sort of this or this. You know, it wasn't sort of art or a band. It was just the band started, and we were started playing and stuff, and it started uh, moving right along. So that that's the direction I put all my emphasis on. That's really great. Um, <clears throat> when por uh, when performing on stages uh, in front of uh, mass audiences, um, what happens inside you? I get I. I think m my adrenaline level goes up. I lose my appetite. I think adrenaline does that. And I, um, I sweat a lot. I, um, I get pretty nervous. Although I don't, th and sometimes I have to uh, take a shit a couple of times before <laughs> Or go on. I guess that's because of the nerves. Yeah. Of course, the adrenaline could do that too. And I don't, um, let's see what else. I guess I get I get sort of fidgety. Um, if I have any illness, like a cold or 
stomach ailment or anything like that. It disappears very short, it's just before we play. Yeah. And then about an hour after we finish playing, it, it comes back just the way it was before. But for that period, it's, it's real bizarre. It's like if I have a stuffed up nose or cold or anything, it just everything, all the symptoms disappear. And then afterwards, they all come back and I feel, <laughs> I feel sick again. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> how did you like playing in Berkeley? I liked it. Uh, the, the sound was good, I, at least where I was standing. And I, I felt, yeah, I felt pretty good about it. What differences uh, did you find uh, in the crowds uh, compared to the crowds in New York? I think it's a, it's a little hard to generalize. Um, I think crowds here are a little more willing to dance. Yeah. If that's one thing I can notice. Although I think there's there's a a wish to dance in New York. Mm -hmm. But I, I there's a I guess it's a cliche of jaded New Yorkers yeah. trying to be cool. Yeah. Um tell me this. What was your impression of the uh, art situation in Rhode Island? and uh, in the East Coast area? Well, uh, Rhode Island's a little place, and I think you could almost say it's like most of the world. Uh, it, right now, uh, most people think of New York, I think, as uh -huh. the, the, uh, the place where most of the mixing goes on. Yeah. And their interactions and all that sort of thing in, in that world. And uh, it's also where all the buying and selling goes on. Yeah. And all that. Uh, it's been called the, the imperialism of the New York art world. Yeah. How do you feel about being called a, a new wave or a punk rock band? I think it's... Um, I imagine a lot of groups feel that they don't like to be categorized as 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 being um, just part of a, a genre. They, I think all all groups like to feel like they have something special to offer that makes them slightly different from other groups. And although they might. Um, for convenience, be closer to a certain number of other groups than to a whole lot of others. Uh, it, uh, they like to maintain their individuality, and so it's it's annoying in some respects to be generalized, but in in, in other ways, uh, you know, I'd feel people were more off the mark if they said we were country rock or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is, uh, what is your own personal response uh, on behalf of the Talking Heads uh, to New Wave and punk rock music? I, I think there's a few areas in music where things are happening now, where anything can happen, and that's one of, that's one of the areas. There's a whole lot of areas in music where nothing's happening and nothing looks likely to happen. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, listen, David, uh, it's really been a pleasure speaking to you this afternoon over here at Target. And uh, I know for a fact that the talking heads are really going to go far. And uh, thanks a lot. Thank you.